All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to our friends online and to our friends here in the Information Center, welcome. We're just thrilled to have such a great turnout this evening. Uh, hopefully everyone has just already introduced themselves at, at the tables here and uh, made some new friends. Uh, we're gonna get started. <clears throat> Uh, very happy that we can all gather this evening. My name, for those of you who don't know me, is Mark Mann. I'm the Director of Programs and Institutes here at the Catholic Information Center. The ministry of our center creates spaces for encounter, dialogue, and community at the intersection of faith and life. And we certainly have that on display here this evening as we are joined by Michelle Aldrin and Kitty Piper Shoemaker, who will be facilitating this evening's um, presentation and really more of an evening of reflection, I would say, an offer for your consideration, uh, almost in the spirit of a retreat rather than a formal presentation and a time of prayer as we prepare our hearts and our minds for observing Holy Week in the, in the coming festivities. I want to uh, just continue our time in prayer. We're gonna be praying a lot this evening, but we'll, we'll let's, let's start it off with prayer and then I'll introduce our speakers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we thank you for revealing yourself to us, especially through your word made flesh, your Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose passion we are preparing to celebrate, whose resurrection we are preparing to celebrate. You have given us a pattern for our own lives as we pay attention to the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. We ask that you enliven in us your spirit, that we might come to know you more intimately, love you more deeply, and follow you unreservedly. This we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, very brief introductions, but very happy again to welcome Michelle Ogren, pastoral musician here in the Diocese of Grand Rapids. I'm very happy to, to welcome you here. And she's joined tonight by uh, no stranger to the cathedral or the basilica, Katie Piper Shoemaker, who uh, is just one of the fun facts about Katie is that she is cantering in the same parish she was baptized in at the basilica. So please help me welcome both Michelle Ogren and Katie Piper Shoemaker. What a wonderful group. And this is, it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces, um, musicians, which is wonderful, and folks that I've worked with throughout the years, and even a former teacher, so, <laughs> who is still a wonderful teacher. So, thank you for having me, Mark. And um, Joan, yeah, Sister Joan Thomas. It's like, oh, so. <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Good to be here. Um, I have been a pastor musician, I'll say 40 plus years, but it's actually a little bit more than that. Um, and every year, most of those years, I have either prepared to canter the Psalms myself. Um, I've worked with other cantors um, and helped prepare them. Um, and I've tried to pray them. But it's something we don't do often enough. It's one of the prayers during the Mass, a piece of scripture that often it just slides by, right? You might pick up the antiphon, you know, the refrain, my God, my God. Um, but the verses, you know, hopefully you can understand all the words and pray with them. But most often you don't have them in a booklet. So if you don't hear them um, or take the time before Mass or before the services, to prepare and read through them, they do just kind of slide by. Um, Kitty and I have shared a lot about how she prepares uh, to present and proclaim the Psalms every week. And I think you'll see with her voice that she truly prays them. Um, Book of Psalms, this isn't Bible study tonight. We're gonna be using a musical Lexio Divina, but the Book of Psalms just, they're concrete. It's the prayer book of the, of the Bible the Hebrew scriptures, these are the prayers that Jesus prayed with his disciples, right? And sung them. Most of them were meant to be sung. They were written in poetic form. Um, 
you will hear different translations. And I'm sure when you are following along in church, you might find out those words aren't what I have here because we have different translations. Um, there's the ones that are in the lectionary, right? That most of us are familiar with. Those are from 2002. And then we recently have 2010, the Grail Psalter, which was a new translation. This will eventually go into the new lectionary, which I was just reading 2025. So don't buy new hymnals. Um, so that's why you hear different translations. And, and as any type of Bible study will tell you, it can be a good thing to read and pray over different translations because sometimes a different word will give you a little bit different insight. So we'll say forsaken or abandoned. They have slightly different nuances. So it's not a bad thing to prepare with different translations. But if you're ever confused why what you're reading in your missalette or your hymnal isn't the same as what the cantor is singing, that is why. Um, the Psalms are immediate. If you read them, there's no censors. There's no filters. The people in the Hebrew scriptures knew how to talk to God. And they lamented and they rejoiced. But they just said what they needed to say. And there wasn't any like, oh, I can't, I can't possibly say that to God. No, this was an intimate relationship with God. Um, from whom no secret can be hidden. And sometimes there was rage, and we all feel rage when we look around the world today. We feel rage, but they always come back to hope. When you read through the Psalms, there's always the turning into hope. So we're moving into Holy Week. This weekend, Sunday, Palm, Passion Sunday, we'll hear the Passion proclaimed. And the first reading is from Isaiah suffering servant. The psalm is usually connected to the Hebrew scriptures and leads into the gospel. And gospel is the passion. So you'll hear, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, then we move to Holy Thursday. We have the gospel of John with the washing of feet. It's the only place we hear it. We hear it every single Holy Thursday. It's the other part of Eucharist, service to other people. And the psalm we sing, Psalm 116, is the psalm that's sung in the Jewish tradition at Passover. It's the cup of blessing, the cup of rejoicing. And we will sing those same words on Holy Thursday and Good Friday. Once again, we hear from Isaiah and we hear 31, Psalm 31, as we kneel at the foot of the cross. So those are the three psalms that we're going to experience tonight. We also know that those words were on Jesus's lips as he hung on the cross. My God, my God, and it is finished into your hands. I commend my spirit. So in our very complicated world, how do we hear them? We can hear them as the Hebrews heard them and sang them in the Old Testament scriptures. We can hear them as the Jews of today sing them. We can hear them as Christians, and how do we pray those? And it's going to speak to each and every one of us in a different way. So as we go through these, hopefully, we'll have, what are you hearing? How is the Spirit opening your heart to what words, to what phrases? And that's where we have Lexio Divina. So as many of you have experienced, and you know, with Lexio Divina, there's generally four steps. The Lexio, or the reading or the singing, as we will tonight. Um, after each stage, there's a time of silence. Um, and then the meditatio, meditation. The oratio, we address God directly in prayer. And contemplation, quiet. So there'll be time for quiet as well. So we are going to begin. What will happen is we're going to start, as you see up on the screen, and you have in front of you Psalm 22. This is the psalm we will pray this weekend, Passion Palm Sunday, Palm Passion Sunday. We will all read it together, and then we will take just a moment, reflect, and then I will ask you to just share a word or a phrase that speaks to you 
around each of your tables. And for those of you who are watching, um, you can just write it down. And we will hear it again second time musically. And we'll have pretty much the same process. We'll walk you through each of the steps. And then we will hear it a third time musically. And then we will share with the larger group at that point. And we'll go through each of these psalms. So, okay, so let us begin. Father, oops, I'm on the wrong song. Excuse me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many thoughts around me have the evil doers. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count on my thoughts. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast slots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Let's take a moment of silence. What word or what phrase is speaking to you this evening? My God, my God, I will You see me, deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. For dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O oh Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength. Make haste oh, to I help me. I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God, my God, 
As you sit with those words in your heart, what is what words or phrase speak to you? Comfort me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him if he loves him. I God, my God, they have me and me. Indeed, many dogs surround me. A path of evil doors closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. I got my they have you for and me. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots, but you. O oh, Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, I have abandoned me. I will proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, my God, I have abandoned me. Take a moment of silence and then we'll do a group discussion. Those of you at home will be able to enter a chat room and then we'll call you back after four minutes.
as we take time to reflect on our own experiences, how have we felt distant? When have we felt desperate, separate from God or other people? And how have we cried out for help? So if anybody, we'll start with this table. If you'd like to share with the larger group, we'll just take a few moments to share if you feel comfortable. Well, I'm sure one of My observation from it is that no matter how horrific things are, most of us will never encounter all the kinds of things you see in, in the psalm here is there is always hope. Um, there's always hope in God um, if we if we put our trust in God. Anybody else? Well, oh. I find oh sorry, I find that um, suffering can be good. I mean, the Lord gave us the example that He suffered. We will. Why not? If He did, and it can be good things can come from it. Like He said, Brian said, "There's always hope." Mm -hmm. Thanks, Marcia. On this table over here, Mary, I can really relate to what Mary said. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but okay. we say that, you know, why have you abandoned me where we have abandoned God? Mm -hmm. That God's always there. Yeah, because God never abandoned Right. Us. Yeah. It's us who turn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, I thought that was quite profound. Thanks, darling. Mm -hmm. A headline this table? Or two in this table. I'm thinking we, this, oh, oh, I'm thinking this psalm head is head. Uh, uh, Jesus crying out, God, why, my father, why have you abandoned me? And how many times in our life do we sometimes feel abandoned? But the one verse that I picked out, but you, O oh Lord, be not far from me, my help. Hasten to aid me. And I'm thinking of Padre Pio, who said, stay with me, Lord, because you know how I abandon you. So sometimes that's how we are, but uh, we have trust that he'll look after us. Okay. Psalm 116 is a psalm of thanksgiving. As I mentioned before, it is part of the Passover meal in the Jewish tradition. Uh, the psalmist is expressing gratitude to God for his many blessings and deliverance. It emphasizes trustworthiness, faithfulness, and the author's personal experience of God's care and protection, which so many of you have already shared in your own lives. So let us read Psalm 116 together. Our blessing cup is the communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid, you have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Let one word or phrase enter into your hearts. Oh, 
now same copies of communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation is I will call. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. He has sent and made you have lost my birth. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord fill for all his What is God saying to us through that word or phrase? So what's been our experience receiving blessings from God and feeling grateful? How do we hear our blessing cup in relationship to our lives and to Eucharist? Okay, we're going to um, pull everybody back, and as we did before, let's we'll just take a few minutes, and if you'd like to share with the larger group, um, we can do that, and those of you who are watching from home, if you want to share any of your reflections, just um, let us know. So let's start over here. talked about just um, how can we give back to the Lord. We talked about how we can give back to the Lord and just that we're so grateful um, for what God has given us and what can we do. Great. Thanks, Mary Beth. Okay. So did everybody hear Mary Beth sharing? How can we give back to the Lord? Um, Mark, this table? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it's more of a question than a comment here. We got the cup of salvation, and then we also have the blessing cup. I mean, for the Jews back in this time, were those kind of synonymous things? Was the blessing cup known as the cup of salvation? It's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. But remember, it was, and it was used as a celebration and gratitude during the Passover meal. So blessing. Mm -hmm. was, the blessing was their fourth known? cup? It was their fourth cup. So I don't know. That's a very good question. Anybody from home? like to share? Uh, yes, the thing that, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes. we can hear you just fine, Fran. Okay, right. good. Go ahead. Um, the sacrifice of Thanksgiving and calling upon the name of the Lord, I was thinking that one of the best ways to grow closer in our relationship with God is to show our gratitude for all of the gifts he has given us. Um, that that's what i was thinking that's a wonderful spiritual practice every day finding some things to 
be grateful for in our lives. On over here. Thank you. We were talking about um, our blessing cup, and we were thinking of it sort of not as an individual cup, but as a community kind of thing, like our, that there's, um, you know, prayer is powerful, but it's especially powerful if we're all kind of participating in the prayer. So we, we looked at our blessing cup in that way. Mm -hmm. Very good um, insight, our blessing cup. Can I say something? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, in this particular psalm, it's your servant am I, because I have cantered since I was 13. And so this, when I sing this, makes me just feel, because I, I do feel so privileged to be able to be a cantor and to be a servant. So that hits me. So you're 18 now? Huh. <laughs> Child canter, yes. <laughs> Anybody at this table? I kind of put that word communion as a piece of communication, not only with the Lord, but the Lord has put all of us on this earth to serve and to be with one another. And how do we together communicate God's presence? Uh, on this earth so that we are gradually going to share that blessing cup wherever God is. But right now, here's where we are. So how do we live that communication, that communion with God amongst ourselves and amongst the world that's so difficult right now? Thank you, Sister Joan. Thank you, Sister. Thank you. Sorry, but I just I was called <laughs> to ask you. <laughs> we will now move on to Good Friday, Psalm 31, Psalm of Lament. The psalmist is crying out to God for deliverance from enemies and affliction, but it's also, again, a psalm of trust and confidence in God's protection and guidance. So let's pray Psalm 31 together. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O oh Lord, O oh faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am the object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny, rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The psalm which we sing every year on Good Friday, how does it speak to us tonight? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, my spirit. 
Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your What are our own experiences of trusting in God, relying only on God's protection and God's guidance? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let 
let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. For all my foes I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. But my trust is in you, Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted. All you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. take a few moments and then share again how we've trusted in God, how we've trusted and relied solely on God's protection, God's guidance, and also how these psalms may have poured over us this evening as we enter into the holiest days. Um, I just wanted to say, I can't remember the cantor's name, but she just sings with such um, expression and it really hits home the words of the psalm so much better for me. And it's um, she's a good role modeling um, for me as I'm continuing to learn to cantor. So I, I appreciate that, but the the um, the depth of the psalm is is so much greater when heard in singing, cantering. Thank you for that, Kitty. Yeah. Truly Kitty prays the psalms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is a gift. And and God bless you for taking on the ministry and service of being a cantor. 
Thank you, Kitty. No blessings. <laughs> no, it was beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. And that really was our hope, was that we could spend the time to reflect on those scriptures we hear all the time proclaimed, and um, we don't often have the time to spend with the psalm itself. Anyone at this table like to share? Brian? Yeah, I was going to comment something. It's about the psalm in general. Um, because it's sung on Good Friday, and most people think only about the refrain line, you know, Jesus saying, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And yet, when you look at all the verses of the psalm, it is so incredibly, remarkably upbeat about, yeah. I've just put everything into the Lord, and that is what will save me. Mm -hmm. And when you think of Jesus uttering those words, and he knew these psalms frontward and backward, and we, so we know that he was totally trusting in God the Father. Thank you, Brian. Maybe one quick thing that I've noticed in all of these Psalms here, it's like, uh, you know, given that these verses came from the Old Testament, you know, you could imagine the, the prophets of old saying these kind of things and praying these kind of things, but you could also imagine Jesus and the saints, uh, the persecuted saints, mm -hmm. saying and praying all these things. So I think it's just a wonderful tie in. I never knew there was that kind of thing in the Psalms. Yeah. So. What a gift. What a gift. Thank you for that. Um, I think if there's one takeaway from this whole presentation tonight is take courage, be stout hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> well said. Thank you, Maureen. Anybody else here? We're here. Pat? We also found this very hopeful. And um, we thank you for um, this evening because next week is going to be just so much more meaningful. Amen. And, um, Amen. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So thank Thanks, for, Pat. Thank Thanks for sharing. And thank you, everybody, for being open and sharing. Um, and again, praying these psalms with us, with the Hebrews, with Jesus, with his disciples, and with each other as we enter into Holy Week. Would you like to all sing? Yeah. Absolutely. So if you turn to, I think it's on the back, O Face of Christ Most Holy, we will close with this. It's to the melody of O Sacred Head Surrounded. Alan Hummerdink um, just posted this. He wrote the text. It's not, it's based on O Sacred Head. You can see what he wrote at the bottom, so I won't go through that. But he talks about O Face of Christ, O Hands of Christ, O Side of Christ, O Feet of Christ. And he ends, if you look at that fourth stanza, help us to stay here praying to never turn away made strong by your own passion. We live your life each day. And as Maureen was saying, be stout hearted. So we will conclude with this. Thank you to those of you who are at home. Mark, do we have any other words before we sing? No. Blessings on your holy week. Alan Hummerdink is a composer and editor for World Library and GIA. Um, so he's in the Chicago area, but you will see his name in hymnals here and there. And he posted this two weeks ago, so he shared it with us, and I thought, let's sing this. Yeah, great. Yeah, and just want to thank everyone for being here. Those here in the room with us, really cozy this evening, uh, but very rich, prayerful time. And for those of you online for joining us and making this part of your preparation for Holy Week. And we'll close with the song, O Face of Christ Most Holy. Oh, uh -huh.
thy splinters torn and bleeding with the tragedy and loss your hands reached out in healing they blessed and broke and gave to feed us with abundance we plead for them to side of Christ most holy, now pierced for all to see, the stream of blood and water flows forth with mercy free, the sweetness of the Shows forth your grace eternal, reveals redeeming power. O feet of Christ most holy, which walk the way to death, then nailed with brutal eye. Stand through your final breath. Help us to stay here praying to never turn away. Made strong by your own passion, we live your love each day. May you be blessed as you go home this evening and walk into holy. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.